This week, an update on the RV industry. What's new for 2024? That and a whole lot more. This is RV Miles. Fall is coming. Let's get going. L.L. Bean wants to help you make the most out of this spectacular season with gear tips and advice for heading outdoors. For fall hikes, when it's cold in the morning and warm in the afternoon, layering becomes very important. You don't want to get chilled and you don't want to sweat through your clothes either. A good rule of thumb is to start out dressed as if the temperature is 10 degrees warmer than it is. So once you start generating body heat, you won't get overly hot. For more tips, easy how-tos, and inspiring stories, visit llbean.com slash guide. Welcome to episode number 293 of RV Miles. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two RVers who, along with our three boys, Jack, Ethan, and Henry, have been crisscrossing North America on one epic road trip since 2016. Here at RV Miles, we talk all things RV and outdoors, from industry news to <laughs> travel destinations, our national parks, and so much more. Your gesture, which can only be seen if you're watching this, indicates that I have a rhythm towards how I move you do. You when we so, do. Yes. So when I say, uh, note for the audio, when I say industry news, I always turn and gesture to Jason <laughs> because he handles all of our industry news. So Well, we're going to talk about a bit of that today. Yes, uh, uh, I, in fact, during that segment, can I just... Can I just kick out? Sure. Can I just go get a cup of coffee? <laughs> Do you, it's very early here today in Amana, Iowa, so <laughs> I might go make another pot of coffee. Last week, I was at the RV Industry Open House, which is sort of like an insider thing for, it's basically an RV show for dealers that the manufacturers put on for dealers. And I have some thoughts about that that I'm going to share with you in the middle section of the show. But first, we are coming to you from Amana, Iowa. Today is the first day of our hopefully first annual homecoming rally. Yes. We are getting the, the building all set up. If you're watching, you can see it behind us. This is a good old Midwestern family reunion at the community center with catering from the grocery store and <laughs> plastic tablecloths. It's perfect. Wow, Jason. Really, <laughs> really good way to sell next year. I'm sure everyone already is marking their calendars for October of 2024. We got cornhole, which I finally accepted. No. Nope. Call it that I guess nope. because look here's the thing like we've always said I have always said people from Indiana call it cornhole people in Illinois call it bags so what you're also saying is you have a habit of saying that people yes. from certain states say certain things. Are we ready to go ahead and get into this? Well, I, we, I just wanted to throw we? that out there so that we could get 100,000 comments about what you call it where you're from. Oh. Because last episode... Yeah, let's talk. Let's go. Last episode, I may have made a generalization uh, about how a hay ride is called a hay rack ride. Mm -hmm. uh, and I may have... I may have looked at you like you were from outer space when, uh, yes. when you were like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Turns out about 95% of you call it a hayride and a, a, um, a group of us strong few call it a hay rack ride. Let's, I think it needs to be more like 99.8 no, no. of there you. There have been many checking in <laughs> in the last several days that are on the hay rack ride side. Oh, somebody went out and found their people. Is that, did you, no, have you, did I you did hire not, an agency? I, I did not. To go out but and here, find the hay rack. Here's the people. thing. Here's the thing. What I have come to realize, because, you know, I am somebody who likes to bring people together. I like to <laughs> I like to get in and dig the history of something and figure out like how things tick and mm -hmm. and who's right and who's wrong and, and, and just educate us all. There's no right or wrong though. See, that's so, where you get tripped up no, because that's you, true. you there's nothing that's is black absolutely and white. True. But but we are talking, I think, about two different things. Oh no! Here we go. And there is buckle up, everybody. With this a is whole, where 
This is where he justifies still being right. Strap in. Here we go. We're with, about to get a whole lesson on the history of the hay rack. With a whole lot of overlap in mm-hmm. between. So I think a lot of us from my area called it a hay rack ride because there was this famous haunted hay rack ride that everybody did all the time. Where your cousin yearly. punched people. Yes. Uh, it, it is now gone. Uh, but that was a big popular thing to do. But in looking into this and in talking to some of you who, who sent some messages, what I've come to realize is that, okay, so a hay ride is when you ride on hay. Obviously, you're on some sort of trailer with hay bales uh, sitting on them or a pile yes. of hay or, or whatever it is. There's hay that you are riding on on a hay ride, right? A hay rack ride is when you ride on the hay rack. And a hay rack is a wagon, uh, a giant wagon. So if you imagine a trailer, uh, you know, that you would pull behind a, a truck, this ain't it. It's got four wheels on the corners instead of two axles like you would have on a regular trailer. Jay, I didn't realize you had and uh, this gone is meant, this deep. A hay rack is, is meant to be pulled behind a tractor. Uh-huh. It goes through the field a little bit easier. That's why it has the wheels on the, on the far corners, right? So that's often what you will see pulling kids through the campground. But not always. Sometimes it's just a trailer with some hay on it. Now, a hay rack, when you go on a hay rack ride, might not have any hay in it. Sometimes they'll put bales in for benches, but sometimes they'll just put in benches or there will be wood seats and Mm -hmm. crates to sit on. That's a hay rack ride because you're not riding on hay. So in the the Venn diagram Mm -hmm. of these two words, you've got the hay ride, you've got the hay rack ride. There's a lot of overlap in the middle where... You're on a hay rack and hay, and it could be a hay ride or a hay rack ride. There are hay rides that are on like a trailer where you're not on a hay rack. And there are hay rack rides that are just on a hay rack and could have hay or could not. You're welcome to those of you who were looking for a history lesson today for your children. You've now been provided that by RV Miles. I think, though, what you're failing to touch on before we move on is that perhaps this was an awesome lesson in not just assuming that your one way is the right way and that the other one does not Uh, exist. I think I touched on that first. I just, I I must have missed it. Can you say that again? I, I, can you, (laughs) I, because you know what they say when you assume. I was just as floored as you that, that other people don't call it hay rack rides as you were that I called it that. So, but you, hear, you heard it here first. I do think, though, that this is your manifestation of the fact that you are 0 and 4 in fantasy right now. Probably. And that you are looking. It's a good, good chance. Yeah. Um, so I'm 2 and 2. Like, uh, our, he's 0 and 4. I think that he's manifesting somewhere where he can, you know. Our oldest, who couldn't have any less interest in fantasy football, beat me. But he was handed his, because I know the people here want to know. I know y'all are really like, what is going on with your fantasy football situation? Uh, he was handed his first loss yeah. by his Aunt Jenny, yeah. who promptly fired off a text to the whole group, being like, sorry, bud. Because it, like, it was looking like Jack was going to win the whole league without paying any attention whatsoever. <laughs> So <laughs> maybe that's the secret to success, you guys. Well, however you define success, maybe that is the secret to it. Maybe we just shouldn't care as much. Just jump in at the last minute, hit that optimize button and be like, boom, I'm out. See y'all later. <laughs> so there you go. This is what's going on in the world of RV Miles. Outside of the fact that starting today is the homecoming event, we are looking forward to welcoming over, I think, 40 to 50 rigs are showing up today. We have an incredible incredible event planned for the whole weekend. We've got a cornhole tournament. We've got trivia. We're going to the Renaissance Fair. Thursday night is uh, Bears versus Commanders. Will the Bears be handed their first win? They've only lost like 14 yes. in a row. Everybody we drove get... to the middle of the uh, middle of a cornfield in Iowa I... to watch the Bears <laughs> lose <laughs> on a TV. <laughs> to watch Abby <laughs> scream at the television. We actually went out yesterday and bought a TV because we needed one for the apartment so I went and bought a 65 inch television and it's 
it's like first use will be at this event this weekend. <laughs> so there's a lot going on here and it is absolutely happening again next year. And we plan on next year being even bigger and just as much fun and just as much community. So uh, if you are not on the RV Miles mailing list or if you are not a Mile Marker member, Mile Marker members get uh, kind of first pick of the tickets before they go on sale to the general public. You can join the mailing list at RV Miles dot com slash mailing list or you can become a mile marker member at rvmiles.com slash mile marker so that you are all informed for when we do this again next year here in the good old midwest all right we're going to take a break and when we come back we're going to talk about uh the 2024 rv industry jason is going to talk about that we will be right back i am going to go make a cup of coffee this episode is sponsored by the park wolf app Ever found yourself in the heart of a national park surrounded by beauty, but unsure where to go or what to see? That's where Park Wolf comes in. Park Wolf is the ultimate app for exploring national parks. As you drive, the GPS shows you what's coming up on the road, and an audio guide will fill you in on what's there so you can decide if it's worth a stop for you or not. Gas running low, looking for a bite to eat or a bathroom break? Park Wolf's got you covered. It keeps track of the nearest gas station, restrooms, food, and pullover areas. And the best part, it works without an internet connection. And if you're a wildlife enthusiast, you'll love Park Wolf's wildlife maps and sighting notifications. So before you set off on your next national park adventure, download the Park Wolf app for your iPhone from the App Store. It's your ultimate guide to national parks. Chances are you've seen them on the road. That's because Blue Ox designs and manufactures the best towing products in the industry. Just look around. You'll find them on highways and campgrounds and anywhere you find people traveling in the great outdoors. Award-winning tow bars, base plates, and brakes. A full line of weight-distributing hitches. Adjustable ball mounts and a new line of fifth-wheel hitches. With Blue Ox, towing doesn't have to be a drag. To learn more about how Blue Ox can make your travel adventures even more stress-free, visit blueox.com. We're back and we're going to talk on this segment about the 2024 RV industry and what's coming down the pipe. Abby has her coffee, so she's ready to just listen and, and make jokes about me. No, I will I will have <laughs> things to say. I'm not going to make jokes about you. I make jokes with you, hon. That's the I'm beauty expense. of our relationship. <laughs> um, but as I mentioned before, I spent uh, a few days in Elkhart, Indiana, which is the RV capital of the world, as they call it, where about 80% of RVs are manufactured uh, at the annual RV open house. This is where the RV industry comes together to show their wares to all the dealers. So we think of ourselves as the customers, right? Uh, but actually the dealers are the biggest customer. Um, so when RV manufacturers decide what they're going to build, they're thinking of what the dealer is going to buy, right? They're not thinking of what you are going to buy. A lot of them do. Of course they do. Well, they're but, hoping that the dealer but, is thinking about what you are going to buy as well, yeah. because the dealer needs to sell the rig. And in order to sell the rig, they have to have things on the lot that the the consumer wants. Yeah. And unfortunately, that is a that is a big piece of the consideration. And you do have a lot of dealers out there that are very old school, um, that aren't following the trends of what the customers want. There's a lot of them out there that are like, I like brown. Brown brown stays clean. Brown doesn't brown never looks dirty. You don't have to wipe brown down all the time. Stop putting white in all these RVs. Give me 45 of that same fifth. I'm year. not kidding. That's exactly why brown has been around for so so much longer than it has been in fashion in in the rest of interior design. It's because when they let 200 people go through the rig you want to buy at the dealership, they don't have to clean it up as much <laughs> right. because it's brown. And, uh, you know, they're thinking of least common denominator buyers, too. They're thinking, well, there's going to be that person that doesn't like to clean up their RV. And, wants, you know, <laughs> it, but yeah. there, there is a lot of that going on. Uh, and it's getting better and better because of social media, because of platforms like this, where we can talk back to the industry, um, all sorts of different ways now that the RV industry and the dealerships can sort of hear what we all think. Uh, believe it or not, they're, you know, getting around to that. 
right now. It's what year is 2023? They all discovered so, social media so, about a year and when a half did, ago. When did Facebook happen? I, anyway. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can, 2000, I, you know what? That's a better question it, for Jack. Prob- not as old. I don't think it's as old as we think. It's probably like 2000. Six or something. I don't. Uh, yeah, that's I don't a know. guess. It's been a long time since I've seen the social network. So anyway, th- this is a big event where the manufacturers wine and dine the dealers, and this is my second time at this event. And this time, all I was doing was really thinking, why doesn't the RV industry treat the customers like this? Ooh. Because look, if you're a dealer, you go to this event. It's free. Tons of food is included. The manufacturers are in different places. Some of them are grouped together. Some of them are not. Some of them are grouped together under their major umbrella company. We know there's only a couple major umbrella companies out there. The big ones being Forest River, Thor, and and Winnebago. And they have set it up like a you know a fair. They've got like. A, pretzel booth and popcorn and all that sort of stuff you didn't tell me that there was going to be a pretzel booth they have concerts uh the concerts were a little less this year but like last year when i was there they john mellencamp was performing for for dealers i didn't go to it but like that's kind of the level this feels like a total vibe where i would expect like pitbull or something (laughs) Totally. Absolutely. 100%. Uh, This is absolutely his jam. But it is always like country slash Americana. Yes. Folks. <laughs> but but wait, no, I say this because yeah. wasn't it like two years ago that Pitbull played Pitbull, the Pitbull. Mississippi Valley State Fair? Pit- it's the Mississippi Valley Fair. Oh, sorry. Mississippi Valley. It's not a state fair. Pitbull, I believe, is Americana. It can be categorized as Americana these days. <laughs> Seriously? I, I think that's... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything Pitbull about music for categories. Everybody. Uh, uh, Pitbull, listen, music is for everyone. But listen my to point, what you like. My point being, though, what happens when we go to an RV show? Mm-hmm. First thing is we have to pay to get in. Pretzels are expensive Why there. do we have to pay to get into an RV show as a consumer? You're trying to sell us something. We don't pay to walk into Walmart, right? Well, then you ain't going to pay for it itself, Jay. Well, the dealers should pay for it. The <laughs> manufacturers should pay for it. It's insane to me. It, it just kind of shows you who their priority is. I mean, obviously, the dealers are buying a lot more RVs than the individual buyer mm-hmm. is. But I, 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 there's a contrast here because just a few days before the open house is always the Hershey RV show. So the Hershey RV show in Pennsylvania is billed as the largest RV show. They can argue back and forth between Tampa if they are or not for sure. But Hershey is where usually the new 2024 stuff is shown for the first time. Not all of it. Some of it gets shown there and then some of it doesn't make it there. And then sort of mid model year is the Tampa show in January where sort of the the early early next year stuff is happens and sort of the concept stuff. It's just weird to me that the dichotomy of like this big Hershey RV show event that you pay to get in, you pay all this money for the food, you pay for parking, all that sort of stuff. And they're trying to sell a bunch of RVs and then they have this big free event for, for the dealers. I wonder if this is really similar. And if we've talked about this in the past, if you listened to last week's detour, if you're a mile marker plus member, then you heard us talk about our uh, experience for one month of owning a Tesla. And you really heard us talk about um, the buying process. Yeah. And I think we have talked about this here several times as well. The idea that I don't want to eradicate dealerships. I'm not advocating for dealerships to go away. But I think that we need to start allowing a conversation between the manufacturer and the consumer to happen. I think that we should be able to order directly online. We should be going through that whole process. We should be working directly with the manufacturer on what we want. I think that the amount of RVs that are out there, we need to start scaling that down a little bit. The we number of different floor, floor plans. plans. Oh, yes. Absolutely. We need to start scaling that down a little bit. And then we need to, just as you said, the manufacturer needs to start having these big events in Elkhart where it becomes about the RV consumer. The dealers could be there hearing the feedback, talking to the consumer, not trying to sell them something like they are at an RV show. 
but there to listen, to see what the consumer is liking at this open house, and then base their purchases off of the feedback that they're getting from the actual buyer. Well, That's what I'm kind of hearing from you yeah. on all of this. Do you remember a few years ago, we made fun of it incessantly on the podcast. The RV industry had their <laughs> first sort of trade show. Uh, uh, it was in Salt Lake City in the middle of winter. So, you know, no RVers were going there Mm-mm. for sure. The use of the air horn was... <laughs> Really? There's a lot of use of the air horn. A lot, a lot of air horn usage so, at that event. And it was such a disaster for the industry that they didn't do it again. Uh, nobody liked it. Uh, no, None of the manufacturers really, really liked it. And I, I think, but the issue was that uh, the president of the RV Industry Association had some sort of relationship with the, the venue. And that's how that all panned out. When... They, Elkhart is, you know, an hour and a half from Chicago. You could have a big trade show event at McCormick Place or oh, just, man, yeah. just do it in Elkhart and and just have a big party. I, I, I don't get it. There's anyway. Plenty of camping to be had in Elkhart. Definitely don't do it in winter. You can time it so that it's not <laughs> like, you know, yeah. interfering with Hershey or with Tampa. Well, I, and the other thing about that, too, is, you know, part of the reason Tampa is such a big thing is I think Florida, I think more RVs are sold in Florida than anywhere else. But Indiana, being the state where all the RVs are made, is top four level of yeah. the number of states that, that buy RVs. Yeah. So there's there's Florida, Texas. California and Indiana are the top four. I'm pretty Mm -hmm. sure that's off the top of my head, but I'm fairly certain that's accurate. Here's the thing. The RVIA needs to put a focus group together that's not other people that work at RVIA. They need to hire us to be a part of this focus group. Yeah. And then they need... No, I mean, seriously. Seriously. For like money. Yeah, for money. I mean, (laughs) although you're getting these ideas for free right now, just send the check over here. But seriously, they need to talk to RVers, they need to talk to consumers, and then they need to figure out a way to stop asking us to pay for shows like Hershey and Tampa and all of the expense that goes into that so that we can put all of that expense into buying one of the RVs, which is what they ultimately want. They need to focus on the consumer. Yeah. They need to do it where it's accessible for people on the West Coast, too. Let's not forget our West Coast friends. Sometimes they can't all be traveling up to Elkhart. Yeah. And if California yeah. is one of the top four buyers of RVs in this country, yeah, you need to figure out a way. Because now the RV show in, in California was canceled. Well, here uh, this, this is a whole other thing. But the RV show in California, you know, we made a, a, a big deal about talking about it when it was first announced that it was coming back to the Pomona Fairplex. Mm-hmm. Um, so this was one of the three big RV shows of the year. The three, they call them the manufacturer shows. They're, they're ones that the manufacturers really support. Uh, and that is the the Tampa RV show, the Hershey RV show, and it was the, the California RV show uh, in Pomona. That show was canceled. Uh, I, I don't know if it was 2020 or it was the year before, but it, I think it had to do with COVID. It did. It was 2020. Um, and didn't come back. And part of the issue is the expense of getting the RV manufacturers out there. What well, was announced earlier this year that it was coming back and a new format that sounded really cool to everybody that was a consumer where they were going to put the same style of rigs together mm-hmm. instead of bundling manufacturer, 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 or dealer, 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 dealer. What they were going to do is work it out so that all the fifth wheels would be together, all the toy haulers would be together, all the travel trailers would be together, all the motorhomes, and so forth. But that show just sort of disappeared off the face of the Pomona Event Center's website, and uh, the the show's website uh, just changed to a coming soon page. Well, it was just announced on September 22nd that it was actually moving to a different location. Oh, dear. And it's this weekend. Oh, what? So they announced like uh, 
they announced like a couple weeks before it was happening that it was going. It's not going to have the. They're not going to separate all the rigs and everything. It's going to be a it's normal a shell of itself. Normal it RV like. show. Uh, it's going to be. They say it's. They say it's going to be huge. Like they said, like thirty-eight football fields of RVs. Mm, I, I, I question whether it is whether all the dealers are going to be bringing that much stuff out there with that little notice. We'll see. But it, it, there is an RV show happening in the LA area this weekend. Uh, is it going to be what is it going to be like? I don't know. It's not going to be what they were planning for it to be. I can tell you that. Hmm. That is interesting. Yeah. But again, it's an, another example of uh, maybe not being as consumer forward yeah. as you should be because uh, I bet there are a lot of people, not necessarily just in the LA area, who might have really been interested in attending this event. Advertising of it has been so poor that even people in the area have been leaving comments on the news video that featured this back in March. Horribly confused. Yeah. Is it canceled? Is it not canceled? What's happening? What's going on? A lack of communication for sure. So that is the overall. Yeah. So I, you, you talked about the buying experience uh, and, you know, our buying experience with Tesla being so great. Mm -hmm. So one of the other things that, that came out of this, I had a long conversation with somebody from uh, a midsize dealership chain. I don't want to say who it was because I don't necessarily have permission to, to talk about this. They haven't announced what, what's going on yet. But, you know, Camping World is the biggest RV dealership chain. They have over 200 stores. They get... Uh, they get to control a lot of the industry. They get previews of all, all of this stuff. The Camping World representatives are not, for the most part, walking around. They're there uh, at Open House, but m they're getting sp special previews even what, before Open House. So what you're saying is they get all the free pretzels first <laughs> yeah. and then whatever like scraps are left. Plus, I just even add, so you know, the, the RV industry even pays for the hotel rooms for the dealers oh i mean that's how oh. they I, did they pay for your hotel they room? didn't pay for my hotel room. Hmm, interesting uh so here but here's the the thing with the dealerships is camping world has become such a behemoth you know everybody wants to support the independent dealerships but those are those are just going away they're getting gobbled up by dealership chains and particularly camping world Many of them have set, found that this is a good time to sell off to Camping World and our Camping World plans to double the number of dealerships, if not more, in the next uh, three years or so. So it's going to be a lot of Camping World dealerships. So I feel, uh, and I'm, this is nothing against Camping World or anything, but Camping World does need some competition. And I think, you know, it is really important now to sort of look to those midsize mm -hmm. dealership chains or the small dealership chains that have several stores, uh, have the ability to do a little, to have a little influence to support them a little bit more. And they're doing some things where they're, uh, they're trying to trying to compete and make the buyer experience a little bit better. And one of those things that a few of them have done is they've built P, uh, PDI facilities in Elkhart, Indiana, in Elkhart County. Uh, P, PDI stands for pre-delivery inspection. So when a, when a dealer gets an RV from an RV manufacturer, some manufacturers do a full PDI at the, at the plant. Um, some do not at all. Some do uh, it on some rigs and not on others. Some do some level of it. But then when it gets to the dealership, the dealer is supposed to do like, you know, the full work through and finish it off and make mm -hmm. sure everything is absolutely working. Like, for instance, some, some, uh, for instance, in Indiana, they will often do like a pressure test on the plumbing, but they will not run water through it because it's in the winter. Uh, and then when it gets to the dealership, the dealer, and you buy it, then the dealer goes through. And they, the dealerships often don't do the PDI, usually don't do the PDI until you have bought it. And that's because they can fix all the little stuff that people walking through it on the lot have, have done to it. But there are a few dealership chains now that have built their own PDI facilities in Indiana. So they can receive the rigs right from the manufacturers, do their pre-delivery inspection there, and where all the parts and and the components are available nearby in case there's a problem and then they get shipped to that dealership but there are a couple dealers that already do this um but there's one dealership chain that is is looking to really upgrade the experience 
by putting a store in Elkhart that feels like a factory direct experience. Ooh. So you're not buying from the manufacturer, but you're as close to the manufacturer as possible. Because, you know, you can go to Elkhart and buy an RV from a dealership there mm -hmm. and you're not paying that delivery charge, which mm -hmm. can be, you know, thousands of dollars um, because the deliveries have, have gotten really expensive. It can, it's over like $2 a mile, I think it costs to deliver an RV somewhere. So, so this dealership chain is looking to open a, a really great store that is very much service focused. They actually believe you can make money on service. Part of the reason that service sucks so bad and when i'm talking when i say service i mean repairing an rv mm -hmm. is that most dealerships don't feel like they can make a profit on service whereas at an automobile dealership service is very profitable oh we know uh, <laughs> but that's because it is a little bit easier often to diagnose a car that you might have like 10 different models and you know them very well and you you know where all the wiring is ran and all that sort of stuff. You don't have to tear walls apart to find a leak in the plumbing. But the, this dealership is looking to do that and make a more factory direct experience where you can go there and, and get it and, and all that sort of stuff. That's cool. The other thing along those lines is, is the manufacturers are getting uh, better about having their own service facilities in Elkhart where you can get you can get repairs done there now of course that's awful for somebody who lives like in california to have to drive all the way to elkhart to get uh, major repair mm -hmm. type stuff done but it is a step and uh you know many have been doing this for years but they're they're upgrading the experience so i was talking to the folks at alliance and alliance is known for really listening to customers they have put in several campsites with full hookups so their customers can come and stay right there while they get their rv fixed and if it is the type of repair that happens uh, that requires you to uh, get out of your rv they're even putting in an apartment for people to stay oh, at in there so a little airbnb yeah you know and other manufacturers have put people up in hotels nearby um mm -hmm. all the hotels in elkhart are awful by the way Whoa, um that was a tough <laughs> one trying to find a hotel for you that i wasn't worried you were going to come home with you want to you want to stay in south bend that's where you want to stay yes uh but but there's a lot of that sort of stuff happening now let's talk about what we actually saw there yes. in terms of rigs there's not a ton of like crazy new innovation happening this year. There are a lot of new floor plans. There are a lot of little great, and th I think this is a good thing. A lot of tweaks, uh, a lot of improvements, a lot of, of a lot of new interior design stuff like that. That is that is very good. The overall trend throughout the entire industry is what they're calling decontenting, and that means taking features off of RVs and selling them for cheaper. And some of these features, you know, sound good, but aren't great. Like we've always talked about things like outdoor speakers. Stop drilling a hole in the side of the RV to put $3 outdoor speakers in. The, you know, a lot of manufacturers like Ibex are like, just like, we're just going to give you a Bluetooth speaker. It's just <laughs> one more place for, for the, water for that, to yeah, get exactly. into the rig. Like the less holes, the better. I don't need a skylight in the shower. Just give me buttons to push for the awning. I don't need a, mm -hmm. you know, a big screen that makes you want to think it's an iPad, but doesn't work like an yeah. iPad. In fact, it barely, it looks like a... 2010 flip phone android like let's yeah. not do that anymore so so but the the interesting thing about this is this they're not doing that to the main lines what they're doing uh for the most part is most brands are building a different version and calling it something else so there's mm -hmm. like the so grand design has the reflection 100 series is now their sort of decontented version of the reflection so it's they remove some features maybe the I, I and i don't know that what reflection is actually done but let's just say it's gone from uh, on a fifth wheel from four point from six point auto leveling to four point uh, or there's no auto leveling at all and it's just stabilization jacks you have to put your own tv in stuff like that is, is happening and my concern with this is like they're all doing this yeah. without anybody buying it yet and my question is do people really want an rv that says on the side of it 
I bought the cheaper version. Mm. Because if you if you think about cars, like nobody, you don't want to buy a the the Porsche basic, right? You don't want like you don't want it to say that on the side of it, right? <laughs> this is my basic Porsche. Yeah, your basic Porsche, Porsche is still something I can't right? even I can't even afford. I I think. And I wasn't there, so I'll ask this question because listening to you, this is what's popping up in my head. Did you get the impression that what they are um, taking away is actually going to degrade the quality? No, no. Okay. The, so these are generally versions of these that are it is not a, much of a change in the way they're manufactured overall. It's really less features fewer features okay so they're sticking so, yeah. with the the foundation now, they're guess, worth keeping the foundation solid i think it's so important that the quality of the things that are going to be in there are i take so that quality. back a little bit though okay you're you're absolutely right it is important that it is the same but i think there is for some it's going to depend but for some in, instead of like a full hard solid surface countertop it might be sort of like the mdf countertop with the skin mm. i think there is a little instead of a stainless steel sink so in the bathroom of, it might be a plastic Plastic sink. Instead of it's Thomas sort of Paine, we're getting his brother Roger Payne. Roger Payne. <laughs> <laughs> like, so that's what's happening. They're not going to go with that good old Thomas because that's too expensive. But his brother Raj has been making <laughs> some stuff. Is that so, what's happening? So I guess overall, I've had a big question about like, is there actually a buyer for this? Is that going to be the normal buyer because the idea is to the msrps have gotten way too high mm -hmm. we're going to bring in some cheaper models for for those people that are just having sticker shock but maybe therein lies the point maybe the sticker shock is the point and this these models are meant for you to feel like that upgraded version is actually a more palatable price like when you go to the movie, I mentioned this on the news video, right? like when you go to the movie theater and the small soda is five fifty, the medium <laughs> is $6 and the large is six fifty. Nobody's buying the medium soda. No, no, the, no. You're no, like, no. it's 50 cents more. I might as well wow. get the large. I can't come back out. It's going to be th three hours. But then you're like, but what if I have to pee? Oh my gosh, that, what am I going to do? That large like, there's soda, a whole that, lot that goes into that purchase. They could just be selling two sizes at the movie theater because most people are buying the smaller the large yeah that medium size there is meant to make that price more palatable yeah the the 22 dollar pasta at a restaurant makes the 29 dollar steak price more palatable when you're looking yeah. at the 16 dollar sandwiches as the alternative yeah i we have been advocating for episodes and episodes and episodes for less bells and whistles this is this is um, what I'm hearing, and again, we haven't really seen all of these yet. So I I really look forward to getting into some of these models. I think we'll get to see a lot of them when we're in Tampa in a few months. But what I'm hearing is they're taking bells and whistles away, but these bells and whistles seem to be coming, they're taking the uh, quality bells and whistles away. I think different uh, manufacturers perhaps, are doing it perhaps. in different ways. I, yeah, I think uh, it depends. I want to be really careful yeah. with this because we haven't seen everything yet. But there is a difference between bells and whistles and quality that's required inside of an RV for that RV to uh, have longevity uh, I'm sorry, but there will be water leaks. And when you well, start uh, putting in perfect crappy point. countertops. Here's an example. So some of these cost the manufacturer less. So they're able to provide it for less money mm -hmm. uh, because they're cheaper, the countertops. But some of them are, they just don't have to install them. So like a front window on your RV can have a propensity to leak. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ask us how we know. <laughs> if you remove that front window, as this is one of the, this is an example that some manufacturers have done. If you've got an RV with a front window, the this this sort of basic version might not have that front cap window, so the manufacturer doesn't have to go through all the work of putting it in. They don't have to buy it, but also you don't have the leaks, but you might want a front window because it looks really nice, and it does. Well, it's it more leak. about natural light. 
I mean, that yeah. is a huge issue with a lot of, especially yeah. travel trailers. I mean, one of the things I love so much about our Sabre is the 20, I think there's 20 windows in there. And yeah. the amount of natural light that comes in is just phenomenal. And that I think is really important when you're living in a tiny space. You, in the Ibex, if we didn't have that front window, we it'd just be dark constantly. Yeah. It's, a, it's hard. It's a trade-off. It's not easy. I, it's not easy. It's not easy to be an RV manufacturer. And I know we've talked a lot about, you know, maybe we've been a little hard on them. But I think that that's really important because ultimately the end goal for everybody should be the consumer. We're consumers. You all are consumers. This event needs to be more consumer focused. And I think that what might be missing here is yes, they're hearing MSRP too high. Ah, but are they listening to the consumer about ways to bring that MSRP down, but still provide quality. So someone doesn't go off and be like, Oh, don't ever buy that RV because this is this was cheap and this was cheap and this was cheap. It's a it's a balance. It's tough. Some people just want the floor plan they want at the cheapest price. And and so we, they can make them that RV. Th- this is this is one attempt to cater to that buyer. Um, and then some people want the best of that floor plan that they mm-hmm. want. So you do have both options now uh, in a lot of brands and we'll see how this plays out. But I, I think for me, I think a lot of people at, at this level of prices, I think the game has changed. There was a time when, yeah, you just wanted the cheapest price. But now when you're talking about like the difference between $70,000 and $80,000, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people are like, well, you know, my payment is going to be That's $5 like, more a month, which is not the way you should look at it. I got this 20 is, year loan. It's fine. It is $10,000 on your 20 year loan. That's probably worth, you know, $25,000. Look at this point. It's the difference of like, <laughs> oh yeah, just put the bacon on the burger. Yeah. Like, it's fine. <laughs> just do it. All right. Let's take a break though. And uh, when we come back, we'll check the level of our tanks. Let us know though, in the comments, what you think about uh, what's going on in the RV industry right now. If you're on the YouTube version of this video, which is the best place to leave comment but there's also a post about uh but there's also a post of this video in the facebook group Mm -hmm. uh and you know on other social media so you can comment wherever but we'd love to know what your thoughts are yeah and also i'll add to that not only what your thoughts are but what are some bells and whistles that you would take out of an rv to help bring the price of it down while still making sure that the quality remains and that you feel like you have gotten your money's worth let us know we'd love to hear your thoughts We'll be right back. You know, those mattresses that come with RVs, some of them cost the RV manufacturer less than $10 a piece. Those spun plastic fiber things are just awful to sleep on. Even those cute teddy bear mattresses that you find in bunk beds, we couldn't even get our youngest to sleep on those when he was six years old for very long. They're terrible. You need a real mattress, but the problem is lots of RVs have funky size openings for mattresses. That's where Brooklyn Bedding comes in. Brooklyn Bedding is a real quality RV manufacturer and they've set up this platform on rvmattress.com where you can go order some of those odd sizes. You can get the shorter RV mattresses. You can get skinnier bunk models. You can order different thicknesses. If you've got a slide that comes over the top of your mattress, anything like that can be dealt with at rvmattress.com by Brooklyn Bedding. They're giving the entire RV Miles community 25% off if you visit rvmattress.com slash RV Miles and you Use the code RV Miles at checkout. Their mattresses are toxin free. They get shipped from their factory in Arizona. And just because they come shipped in a box doesn't mean they don't have coil springs in them. The hybrid mattresses actually have coil springs in them. These are real mattresses, not just a piece of foam. Again, rvmattress.com slash RV Miles to get a great mattress for 25% off with the code RV Miles. We'll put all the information in the description below. You know, when you get outdoors, it changes your perspective on things. You feel more relaxed. You're inspired to be more active. You discover new places. And fall is the perfect time to shift how you see things. And an e-bike is a great way to do it. We've been traveling with electric e-bikes now for almost a year, and they've been great for extending what you can see in national parks and for getting out of the campground without having to lug the truck everywhere. Plus, you save a bit on traditional transportation costs like gas, parking, and maintenance. 
Electric e-bikes ship free. They come fully assembled and they're foldable for easy travel and storage anywhere you go. Go to electricebikes.com to learn more about their wide selection of e-bikes. They start at just $7.99 with the XP Lite. That's L-E-C-T-R-I-C-E bikes.com. You can even get financing as low as $73 a month so you can get started today. Welcome back to the show. It is time to check the level of our tanks. Sponsored by our friends over at Matt's RV Reviews, Liquefied RV Toilet Treatment, the No BS Toilet Treatment. You can find it over at the Amazon RV Miles shop at amazon.com slash shop slash RV Miles. Okay, Jay, what is in your black tank this week? My black tank is the black flies. I, I'm glad the mosquitoes are gone, but I need it to be the end of black fly season. <laughs> we, we have... We have black tanked a lot of flies and mosquitoes over the years here at RV Miles. Yeah, <laughs> they need to. Um, well, they're vicious right now. Yeah, there was a lot in the rig yesterday. Yeah. They are getting that final hurrah they before are. the cold sets yeah. in. Yeah, bugs perform an important task on this earth, mm -hmm. but the ones that are pests to us humans, could we just not have? Or th don't come in the rig. Like, go yeah. and perform. Can you just your, stay outside? You don't need to be in the house. There's nothing in there that you outside? want. I guarantee you, because all you're going to meet is the end of my fly swatter. Yeah. Don't when come we, in there. When we first started RVing, I remember we, we had a really bad fly problem at the first monthly campground we stayed at. Mm -hmm. And we got one of those fly trap in a bag Ugh. sort of things that you put liquid in and they get attracted to and they go in. And... Boy, that caught a lot of flies, but oh, it was one of the grossest things. That was on a one and Earth. done. It was so gross. It was so gross. But it worked. It did, but it was a one and done. <laughs> it was so gross. All right, what is in your fresh tank this week? My fresh tank is that I I really feel like it is fall now. It has been hot the last few days. It's we've had up to ninety degrees. Uh, it's gonna cool off a little bit this weekend. But look, the farmers have harvested the corn. The hay bales are out in the fields. It is just a gorgeous time to be here in the middle of Iowa. Uh, the birds chirping, and it's just like the the perfect Midwestern fall morning today. And I'm I, I'm a fall lover, and fall is here, and I love the pumpkins and the. It, the, you bring on the pumpkin spice everywhere. I'm fine with it. We had some apple cider donuts this yeah. morning for breakfast. It was delightful. Yes, um, by Friday, the temperature is really going to shift here. It's going to be, I think, a high of like 59 degrees. I know that you have been laying out your sweaters and saying to them, soon, soon yeah. we shall all be together again. Well, I got so. to wear my sweaters in like Alaska. But. <laughs> Jason loves sweater season. I like he to be, really I like does. To, I like to be cozy. Well, we were talking about sweaters. And so this is so random, I know. But if you there are two types of sweater people, you should let us know which type you are. There are the sweater people who want a really heavy, heavy sweater. They want to put it on and they just want to feel like it's a big giant hug and they're just insulated for yeah, the rest like of the it's day. Like, you're like a, you. Like you're, a, like you're a fishing boat captain in Maine that, like, that's got the yeah. turtleneck and the and it's corded and like... So much going on. Got, you are yeah. so... You were born to wear L.L. Well, Bean. Yeah. So then there's the people like me who like the sweater, want to wear a sweater when it starts to get cold but really wants a thinner sweater. Now, useless. Some, that Pointless. is Now, some people might say, "Well, Abby, they call that menopause." Uh, listen, <laughs> I'm not here to talk about that anymore. Okay, I'm not here to talk about that. I had to talk about it with my doctor. That's last time. Actually, you know what? Whatever. Who cares? It's part of life. That's what I'm doing. I don't care. But there are two kinds of people out there. There are the the thin sweater people, there are the thick sweater people. Now, I have always been a thin sweater person. When I even go to buy a hoodie, I love the the almost like jersey type hoodies, oh. like the really thin oh, ones. Thick as possible. Oh no, I because what I want to do is I li I like a layer because I li I like to be able to like shift as the weather changes. But I know that you're like it does not matter if it's going to be 90 degrees. If it starts out at 40 degrees that day, it's going to hit 90. You started out in that thick sweater, and you'll be darned if you're taking that I'll thick I'll take sweater. it off if you're it's like, hot. I will, it's called I will, layering. I will, it is October, and I will be wearing all the sweaters. And I'm like, give me the thinnest possible sweater you make. All right. What's in your black tank this week? Uh, so my black tank. So yes, fall is here. It, the corn has been harvested. The hay is out there. 
We all know that when the last time I was in this area, I, there was a thing called corn sweat and corn sweat was in its season. We're currently in the season called corn dust and this corn dust season is layering a film of, of corn on, on everything I own. We are it is this, corn this part. dust <laughs> Everywhere. This park is literally surrounded on three sides by cornfields that have one has just the, been harvested. The two are in process. The combines are going. They're just and the it's amazing to see. And we the farmers are incredible people, and they put in long, long hours, long into the night. We were driving back from the Quad Cities the other day. It was. 8 30 at night and there you see out in the field the big headlights the combines are out there they're working hard and you're <laughs> just like the road all of a sudden you're like is it foggy nope whoa and then you're like they get that here too though lots oh, of fog here too that's that's corn dust yeah that's a lot of corn dust and you get out of the car and it's just like the tesla looks like this brownish yellow now because it's just covered in you corn know dust. you get rid of pollen it's time for corn dust yeah and then you sneeze and you're miserable because <laughs> because of corn dust <laughs> all right what's in your fresh tank this week uh, so my fresh tank goes to if you're watching this you're seeing that jason and i have on a couple of t-shirts that were sent to us uh for those of you listening the t-shirts have an outline of the united states on them and then inside that outline it says living room and these were sent to us by the fine people over at camplife.com and these t-shirts along with a host of other shirts that they make and and these t-shirts are awesome they're so soft i absolutely love this design um but they also have another purpose with these shirts uh portions of the sales and the proceeds of these shirts go to support organizations like care camp and if you're not familiar with care camp care camp is an organization that sends children who have been diagnosed with cancer to camp to, to RV, to spend time outdoors in a space where they can actually be able to do that as they're battling their cancer. And they can go out and they can spend time just being kids. I mean, to I get goosebumps thinking about it because I can't imagine your childhood. And, and, and we have seen this, actually. We've had some friends whose son uh, is only three years old and he has spent probably the poor, the biggest portion of his life in a hospital battling cancer. It is heartbreaking. Uh, these shirts are fantastic. They are helping to support organizations that support children who are going through incredible hardships and getting them into camp and getting them to the outdoors. And so if you like this shirt, if you want to go check it out, you want to go, they have a host of other uh, designs as well. I would really encourage you to go over there. We're, uh, we have a discount code as well that will take a little bit of money off for you to purchase the but shirt. But this isn't a sponsorship. We don't get a no, kickback no, no, no. from that or anything. No, this we don't. just to help you out. Yeah, it's just no. to encourage people to go over and support this organization. We are not getting paid for talking about these shirts on the show today. Um, so we will have a link uh, not only to the shop, but also with our discount code in the show notes at rvmiles.com slash 283. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be down there as well. But please go over and check these out. Uh, you'll see them pop up uh, on and off now from the uh, when we're on the show because this is a pretty darn comfy shirt. It is nice. Yeah, I'm I like it. You'll it. also notice that Jason was wearing it in the news this week. Yeah, I'm there wearing we it a lot this week. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be wearing it the first night of the event because that's tonight. Because that's tonight. And we should probably go and, and, and go work We got on a lot that. more setting up to do. There's a there's some lights that, need, that definitely need to be raised up so people aren't, you know, yeah. choking on them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for the show, folks. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We really, truly appreciate having you here. It's such a blast. If you have any questions for Jason and I, the best place to answer them or ask them actually is over in the RV Miles Facebook group. Go over and join the over 13,000 people that are there. Jason and I are in there all the time. Of course, if you want to become a mile marker and learn more about that, that includes our monthly night lives that we do every month with mile marker members. You can learn more about that at rvmiles.com slash mile marker. But until next week, please continue to stay safe. Enjoy either your thick sweater or your thin sweater. Either way, it's fall, y'all. And keep logging those RV miles. Bye, everybody. Bye.